And I think we're about ready to head over to Sanctuary Kitchen. If Monica, you want to do a little intro to all those beautiful faces behind you, too. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Monica Machero Philpu. I'm the executive director of Common Ground. Thank you for being here and welcome to Common Ground. I am in the farmhouse kitchen today. Um, and since today's recipes are have an immigrant and refugee theme to them, I thought it would be nothing better than to have members of our Speak Club with me tonight cooking here at Common Ground. So Speak Club is a student-run um, club at Common Ground that really focuses on bringing a sense of community to students who are from uh, outside of the U.S. and from language backgrounds other than English. Um, and I'm going to have my our Speak Club members um, introduce themselves, and I'll bring the computer closer to them so you can meet them. Okay, I'll go first. My name is Ayanara. I'm a senior, and my parents migrated here from Ecuador. Hi, my name is Darlene. I'm a senior, and uh, my dad immigrated here from Mexico, and my mom, Puerto Rico. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm a senior, and my parents immigrated from Iraq. Hey everybody, I'm Ishmael, you can tell me, you can call me Ish, and I'm from Syria. And I am Monica, and I am an immigrant from Peru, and these students welcomed me into their club when I started working, working here last year, and it's been amazing being with them. So I am going to have the honor of passing the virtual baton to Samaya over at Sanctuary Kitchen. Just one last reminder you on speaker view so you can see Samaya and um, hear, follow along with the recipes. Samaya, take it away. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Common Ground, for having us. We're really excited to join your feast this year virtually. Uh, last year, we were able to participate in person, um, but this is the world we live in right now. Uh, my name is Samaya. I'm the program kitchen program manager at City Seed, and I run Sanctuary Kitchen and other kitchen programming here. Um, Sanctuary Kitchen is a program of City Seed that was started in 2017. And we work with refugee and immigrant chefs to create economic opportunities and connections uh, in the community through food. So we normally, uh, pre-COVID, host um, culinary events like cooking classes like this in person, uh, supper clubs and other culinary events with partners in the community like Common Ground. Um, since then, we have shifted um, to do things virtually since um, the pandemic started. Um, and we also run a catering social enterprise that supports uh, regular employment and culinary and professional training for the chefs that uh, work with us. Um, so you can order uh, Sanctuary Kitchen food during the week. We have pickups twice a week. Um, we're at the farmers, City Seed Farmers Market. Um, and we also still do catering and we can modify your meals so that they're appropriate for social distancing and so forth. So uh, today we have uh, Chef Salma uh, here with us. Um, she is from Sudan um, and she also spent some time in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Um, so she has two culinary perspectives <laughs> to share. Um, and I will let her uh, go ahead and share with you what, um, what we're going to make today um, and maybe share a little bit about yourself as well before you get there. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chef Salva and I'm from Sudan, as Sumeya said. Uh, I'm with Sanctuary Kitchen since 2017 and I enjoy to be part of this family. Uh, because I have the opportunity to show other people about other culture uh, of my country. So this was a good chance for me to be part of this kitchen. Today I'm going to demonstrate a Sudanese dish. All the family like it. <laughs> we eat it at breakfast or at dinner. Uh, we call it Sudanese fool, which is fafa bean. <laughs> and uh, I was gonna mention what everyone has in their bag. Uh, a full can. So full, as Salma said, is it literally translates to fava bean uh, yeah. in Arabic. A tomato paste. 
feta cheese and also tomato and green pepper and the onion uh, and by the way the the tomato and the green pepper are fresh from the common ground farm and also a mix of olive oil and sesame oil and common uh, the sesame oil come like this in a bottle in a common it's a powder if anyone can see it <laughs> and also a beta bread that how we eat the food uh, also we need water when we cook the food so these are some items that you want to collect before we get started yeah and uh, forks to smash the food and uh, strain yeah, straight And a knife, of course, and a cutting board. So we can chop the vegetables together. And a pot, of course. So like a skillet. Uh, so we are gonna do some light cooking. Yeah. Um, let's see, is sesame oil? Okay. I will try to also uh, pay attention to the comments and questions and um, answer them as we go along. And if I miss anything, Audrey, uh, feel free to jump in. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you will need um, some olive, oh, actually, uh, Salma said some type of vegetable oil, yeah. uh, a light one, um, like to do the initial cooking. I don't think, I'm not sure if it was added into this or um, if it was not included. Um, so you need oil? Yeah, you'll need a little bit of oil and then you also need some salt and pepper yep. um, that will be added according to your taste. Okay, so we'll give everybody a minute to gather your supplies. Okay, so the vegetable oil was not included. So if you have some uh, light olive oil, canola oil, safflower, that will be perfect. Yeah, no that'll be fine. Any yeah. oil that doesn't really have any flavor because mm -hmm. you really want the sesame oil to stand out. Okay. Can you just clarify what is in the plastic container that has the sesame oil in it? Is the cumin also in there? Yeah, the cumin and the sesame oil is in the bottle. It's mixed already. Okay, but not the olive oil. Yeah, olive Got it. Oil. Thank you. Okay. Um, so okay. So while you guys get your uh, materials, um, someone's going to start with the vegetables. Yeah. And I'm going to change the camera perspective so you get a closer up view of what she's doing. Okay. And you're only using half of it. Right? Yeah, okay, half of it. Don't forget, we use a half of the vegetables, half of the tomato, half of the onion, and the green pepper. Okay. We prefer to chop it in small cubes, that will be better. If anyone have a questions? If there's any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. So we have a question. Um, did you say we're using half of the veggies right now? Yes. So um, the, if you there should be a recipe also in your in your bag to follow along but you're going to use today only half the tomato half the pepper and half the okay. onion because we use one we're only using so if you're doing two cans of beans then you could use the whole um, the whole vegetable So now you're going to dice the peppers? Mm -hmm. Okay. You take the inside of it. And we start to cut it. So if your tomatoes were smaller, you can go ahead and use the whole thing. Um, the one that we had was pretty good size. It's medium. Um, there isn't a tomato can. There isn't a tomato in your bag. Yes, uh, you can use 
diced tomatoes, uh, I would drain them. And if you had a Roma tomato, you can use the whole thing. So I think there are different sizes. Okay. Yeah, if it's small, they have to use the whole tomato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Salma, wouldn't you say that um, this recipe is pretty flexible? Yeah, because you can add more ingredients or you can take out ingredients. It depends on your taste. Some people add boiled oil, uh, egg, and some people add also falafel. So it depends on you. Uh, we like to eat it with the salad, mix yeah. it together. So it's a flexible recipe for everyone. Right. So feel free to add. adjust according to what you have. Um, and your in your personal flavors. Yep. Um, and if uh, it looks like there was a missing tomato, so if you do have canned, you can use um, you can use that. Just drain drain it. Um, if you have tomatoes in your fridge, you can grab one. A lot of people grow tomatoes if you have any in your backyard. I don't want to be in brush, so I hope okay. everyone. So remember. this is about the size of the peppers and the tomatoes. Okay. And you're gonna dice the onion. Yes. So should I go ahead and turn the heat on in your pan yes. for the? Okay. And. Um, I don't know how hot you're going to want it. Not too hot, yeah. So everyone, are we in the same steps? <laughs> Is everybody caught up to the onion? Or we need to wait a little bit. This is the onion size, so small. Okay, so a pretty small dice mm -hmm. on the onions. Okay. So the pan is on uh, medium heat, I think. Yeah. So do you wanna? Add the oil. Okay, so about how much oil are you gonna put like in? Two, two tablespoons, not more than that. One and two. Okay, so two generous spoons of, <laughs> of oil. And it's about, I think it's medium heat. Uh, we're using an induction burner here, yeah. so it doesn't have a high, medium, low. So I have to pull. We're gonna start with the onion, because it needs a little bit of time. We don't want the onion to wear uh, to burn. It just uh, to be soft a little bit, and the color change. Um, not very light brown. Light brown. Yeah, light. A light golden. Yeah. Yeah, so far. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Salma, when did you come to the U.S.? Um, I came with my family in 2016. Okay. At the end of uh, at August 2016. Yeah. Um, 
the one who introduced me to the sanctuary kitchen was my professor at the Gateway, Professor Donna Golden, and I say hi from here. Uh, she introduced me to the sanctuary kitchen as um, I'm an immigrant, immigrant to, as I say, to. Uh, oh. Is it to let people to know about my culture and make a friend from other place. So since 2017, I'm a part of the central kitchen. I think now we can put the, the peppers. The pepper and peppers. So the onions were just starting a little bit. Yeah. The edges were starting to brown. Um, so then she put the peppers in. Okay. And Selma, you have two children. I have two right? boys, one in the fourth grade and the other one in the fifth grade. And they enjoy to be living here in America. It's, the life is different, but of course they miss our family back in Sudan over there. And you're taking classes yourself, right? Yeah, I'm a student at Gateway. Uh, I'm trying to get an um, uh, associate degree in manufacturing engineering. And uh, I hope to get that soon in 2021. Oh, 2021 yeah. Next year. Next year, yeah. So cooking is uh, more of a hobby and interest yeah. for you. It's an interest and I like to cook because it's... Uh, make the family together. We eat, uh, back in our country, we eat in one table and we eat together. We don't eat in different dish. All of us eat together and uh, we have a big tray and we put the old dish or plate inside the tray and we eat together. So cooking was uh, a way to put the family together. Okay, now we'll put the romero. Okay, so now the tomatoes have been added. Oh, we forgot to set some aside for a garnish. But we can use the extra. <laughs> so we were supposed to set some of the diced uh, vegetables aside for garnishing later but uh we forgot um but we do have the other halves yeah, we can, um, we can so we can do that later <laughs> it's different when you're and now we teaching. are going to put the tomato paste okay so that's a good tablespoon of tomato paste yeah basically all that's in the container that you have mm -hmm. you can just put it all in Okay, so she's adding some. Okay, we'll slow down a little bit. Um, she just added, so the onions were brown, slightly browned. Then the peppers were added and cooked for about a minute or two. And then the tomatoes went in. And she just added the container of tomato paste mm -hmm. and then some water. About how much water? Uh, Less than half. Less than half a cup. So yeah. basically you want some liquid in there, yep. but not too much. Okay, we'll give everybody a few minutes to catch up. The smell is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah onions and peppers have a very strong fragrance. Mm -hmm. So um, how often would you eat pool in your home? Uh, Always. <laughs> like every day? And not every day, like um, four days in a week. Okay. Yeah, because kids, the boys like it. Uh -huh. And I think it's better than other fast food than that. Yeah. yeah. So this uh, could be a side dish or a main dish? It's a main dish. It's a main dish. Yeah, and uh, we, uh, as I mentioned before, we eat it with falafel because they like it. Okay. So we made falafel at home. That would be... A a demonstration to have next time. <laughs> okay, so 
so the juices from the tomatoes are coming out yeah. and everything's becoming nice and saucy there. So I think we're gonna start to open the can. So now you're going to open your can of fava beans yeah, and you're going to strain it and get all the canned liquid out. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So she lowered the heat a little bit on the pan. Yeah, because the juice is starting to get out. Okay. And I put up. So adding the fava beans. Yeah. A little bit is extra. Oh, okay. And a little bit of the, uh, the canned water. Um, if you already tossed that, you can use also regular water, right? Then I start to smash it. Okay. So she's smashing the beans. Yeah. Lightly, so you're not you don't want a puree, you just want it a little bit mashed. Yep. Uh, Salma, do you ever use dried beans or do you always use canned? Usually, we use dried beans. We uh, soak it in water for 24 hours. Then the next day we wash it. Then we we'll put it in a pressure pot, pressure cooker. Yeah, okay. pressure cooker. Then it will be ready. Okay. For it. Yeah. Okay, so I think folks need a little bit of time to catch up. So if you need a recap, um, the veggies were sauteed in some oil until softened. Um, some water was added to make kind of a little bit of a sauce. Um, the fava beans were opened and drained with some of the liquid reserved um, and added to the pan. Um, she added about a tablespoon of the liquid from the can um, into the pan as well, and then smashed it, smashed the beans with a fork. So you can see that they're just lightly mashed. And now we're adding some salt to taste. So she added about maybe half. Because I Maybe see a teaspoon of salt. The full in can is already uh, have salt. That's why we don't put too, too much of salt. So a question is, do you smash all the beans or just some of them? Some of them. As you said, we don't want it to be a puree. Okay. And then she added some black pepper. Um, so the salt and pepper, you said to, to, your, to your taste. Yeah. Okay. And then you're going to mix it up. And we can see the, the juices off, so we can add a little bit of water. Okay, so if you want more liquid, you can add some more water. Because you're going to be dipping your bread yep. in it, right? So you need some mm -hmm. sauce. Okay. And the temperature is on, on low now, right? Yeah. yeah. Are there any questions from the audience about the, the steps or about Selma? If we have to wait for them. <laughs> yeah, I think some people are have multiple portions, so they oh. are cooking it all. Okay, that was perfect. We have to let to, to cook for a few minutes, like five minutes. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's time to boil. That's good. Okay, so it's going to yeah. simmer mm -hmm. for a few minutes. The tomatoes are in. Yes. So everything is in except the feta, the feta cheese. cheese and the sesame oil and cumin. So yeah, it sounds like yeah. No, the cheese and those are all going to be added at the end. So everything that's in is so far the onions, the peppers, the diced tomatoes the tomato paste, mm -hmm. the beans, um, and some, a little bit of water. Um, the recipe, um, I thought we sent everybody a copy of the recipe in your bag. It should look like 
it's a half sheet with the recipe like this. Um, oh, okay. Uh, it looks like it's also in uh, another format. So you, you all have that with you. The recipe is on the back of the recipe we used last night. We used last night's recipe. Just like this. And like Salma said, you know, the recipe is just a guide. Um, you can adjust the proportions of vegetables that you put in, the spices, um, you know, according to your taste. So don't worry. Um, you want to taste it and see how you like it. Um, I know some people also put um, like spicy peppers, yeah, right? Some or chili add powders. Spicy, but because of the boys at home, they can't, they don't like to eat it. So we avoid it. <laughs> so they would like um, a review of what you've done so far. So can you, from the beginning, can you explain what you've done? Okay, at the beginning, we chopped the tomato and the onion and the green pepper. Half. Or, yeah, the half of the piece, half of it. We chop it to small cube. Then we uh, put it, uh, we put two tablespoons of vegetable oil and then put the vegetable and try to fry it a little bit. One at a time, right? You started yeah. with the onions? We start with onion, to adjust a little bit to make the color, the edge of the onion, uh, the color change. Then we add the, the green pepper, then the tomato. After that, I put the tomato paste with a, like a half or less than half cup of water and then to cook for a few minutes then I strain the full and uh, put it with the other ingredients and smash it with the fork put the salt and the black pepper in taste and we have to watch it because we don't want it to burn. So if you see the juice comes out, you can add a little bit of water. Otherwise it's okay. And I think now it's ready to eat. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like a consistency of uh, pretty thick, yeah. like a dip. Uh, it looks kind of like refried beans, if you're familiar with that. <laughs> okay, so you're turning the heat off now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, and I'm going to put the ingredients in my plate. Okay, so she is transferring the mixture um, into a shallow bowl. Okay. Smells really good. Okay. Because I forget to take out the garnish. I will cut a little bit of tomato. Okay. So uh, if you, like us, forgot to reserve some of the chopped vegetables, um, you can dice um, a little bit more of tomato and peppers um, if you have them. So just a little bit, about maybe a quarter cup's worth. And she's just sprinkling that on. So you're not um, gonna add the sesame oil yet, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna add the feta cheese. Here, let's move this closer to you. Okay. So earlier we were talking about the different kinds of cheese that you use um, and we could we were trying to figure out because Selma told us to get white cheese and <laughs> uh, but it turns out we I think we already co we were correct in getting feta cheese yeah um, she said uh, the feta that you use in Sudan is typically made from goat yeah goat milk yeah. okay um, or a cow or no or cow it depends what you have at home okay yeah. But the point is that you have a salty... It's a salty cheese. A salty cheese. Yeah. Okay. And this is the cheese. And now we open the sesame oil. And just check. 
Okay, so that's like a garnish. So the mix of sesame oil and cumin, cumin yeah. um, is a garnish that you're gonna drizzle on at the end. And she's putting some additional ground cumin as, which you don't have, unless you have it at home, you can add, but I think it's for decoration. Wow. So this is what the finished yeah. product looks like. Yep. And as mentioned, we eat it with the uh, Vita bread. Somebody's asking if there was vinegar in the cup too. No. There shouldn't oh, be. Here, I don't think that there is vinegar. Vinegar was for yesterday, Dr. P, I think. So this is the last. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah for our dish for today. Yeah. So in that little cup was just uh, sesame oil and cumin, as uh, mentioned. And you just drizzle, you mix it together, mm -hmm. and uh, which it was already done for you, and you just uh, drizzle it over your dish and eat it with the pita bread. Mm -hmm. And you are ready to eat it and taste it. And you have to tell me how it tastes. <laughs> Can you uh, hold it up? Oh my gosh, so beautiful. How's the speak club doing over there? Oh my God. They're doing amazing. They're about, they're not amazing. You want to see? Yeah, can we see? Yeah, hold on. All right, ready? Wait, so can you see it? This wow. Is it's perfect. I know. It's perfect. Oh, Audrey, stop it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's going to be the first one to taste something? Okay. Uh, we can go Ishmael. I know. I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fine. Taste it. Yes. That's yes. That's really good. Getting space. Okay. All right. Wow. Beautiful. All right, ready? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to eat. <laughs> Farmer Deb says she likes it. It's delicious. She got her whole fam. Let us know what you think in the comments or if you want, hop on and say something. Maybe show us your meal. If you want to show it to us, you have to talk if you're on speaker view so we can see it. Hi, I'll tell you, I'll show you. Mine looks totally beautiful. Um, I, I didn't put the pita bread in just yet because I'm going to wait for my partner to wake up before we eat it but uh from a nap but anyway it looks amazing and i can't wait to eat it thank you yum <laughs> i'll show you mine unless i can unless i'm gonna lose it i think i'm gonna lose it oh we can see it <laughs> but I thought I'd had fava beans before, but when I opened the can, I clearly have not, and they are delicious. Thank you. Uh, we're enjoying ours right now. It's fabulous. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. There's different kind of fava beans uh, cans out there. There's one with the flavors, so you need to take one. Maybe, uh, maybe English, yeah. Uh, premium fava beans without any kind of flavor, just the fava beans. Okay. So you can add what you like, okay? So they're asking, um, is this dish eaten at room temperature, warm or cold? No, warm. Okay, so yeah. you eat it, yeah, so eat it now. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> um, 
we were on mute, but I don't know if you saw uh, the way Selma used her bread as a scoop um, to eat it. They want to um, and let's see. Do you guys have other questions for Selma about the dish, about her, her family, her, her food, her cuisine, <laughs> the Sudanese kitchen? I think they are eating. Yeah, I think everyone's eating. <laughs> Should we heat up the pita? Um, warm bread is always no, always good in my in my book. Temperature. Room temperature, yeah. okay. Um, it shouldn't be cold. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a comment. Let's see. Uh, is it a fried egg that you add sometimes? Uh, if you like it, yeah. Yeah, fried mm -hmm. egg or a boiled yeah. egg? It depends on you, as on I mentioned. Toast. Yeah, some people like it uh, boiled egg and some people like fried egg. Mm -hmm. So you can fry the egg and put it like uh, in the top of the dish. And somebody asked, um, you use the bread like a utensil. So you eat this with your hands, yes? Yeah, with hands. Yep, mm -hmm. hands. Tastes better yeah, that tastes way. Uh, somebody's saying thank you uh, for this lovely and tasty lesson. You're welcome. I want to bring that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can bring the cup. Wow. Usually in Sudan, when we uh, make a dish and wait for our partners or our friends to come, we have to cover it. So we have this kind of cover. So we cover it like that. And what is this made out of? Like from the, the plate. That plate um, palm? Yeah. Palm, palm tree. Yeah. Oh, palm, so palm leaves. Yeah, it's a palm leaf. Yeah. They make it together. Nice. There's different size, different color. It depends on your taste, what you like. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. So, nice. We have a question wondering what your second favorite dish is. Oh, my second favorite dish. It's a uh, cube uh, chicken breast. We call it shaya. And we eat it with a uh, hot sauce, peanut butter hot sauce. We, we do have that on our, yeah. we've had it in our on our menu yeah. uh, before. Um, the, and we definitely have the spicy peanut sauce mm -hmm. available. So the chicken, it's it's a grilled chicken, yeah? Yeah. Well, um, if there's no other questions or comments, um, thank you, everybody, for being part of today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people, um, yeah, let me just rotate this so we can, everybody can see. Um, uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, we hope you enjoyed it and uh, you know you have the recipe now. It's a very simple dish and you can make it again for yeah. brunch, for dinner. Um, it's a great hearty vegetable vegetarian dish. Um, dish. Mm -hmm. um, you can make it vegan if you don't want to add the, be uh, the cheese. Yep. Um, and uh, we hope to see you soon, soon. at okay. in our future events. Um, like I said, you can get uh, food from Sanctuary Kitchen um, during the week. We uh, every Saturday we post a menu, um, and you can order it for a Wednesday or Friday pickup. Um, you can also visit us at the farmers market on Saturdays and pick up some of our dishes. We have food from Sudan, from Iraq, Syria, Syria. Afghanistan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from all around the world. Um, so you can get a nice variety um, to your week. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. We're very busy eating on the side of things over here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank much. you. Chef Selma. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I remember to save room for the entree. Yes. Yeah, so they're going to cook next up Filipino food, food from our friends at Kuwait. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye. So I'm seeing a question about when the next lesson will start. So I think we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about common ground. 
Uh, so Kimball, our director of development, and maybe Monica and Speak Club will talk a little bit about Common Ground, give you some time to take a few bites and digest, and then we're gonna go right into Kawi. If you wanna take a break uh, while we're talking, you're welcome to too, and maybe walk around and get some water or who knows, maybe about some wine, do your thing. Thanks, Audrey. I wonder, I think I'm going to start talking because it looks like Monica and Speak Club are eating some delicious food. So many of you are as well. And I have noticed that some of you may not know much about Common Ground. And so you can see uh, in Audrey's video there that there is a beautiful lush forest on the outside. Common Ground is actually on 20 acres of city parkland. And, oh, hold on a second, I'm getting a knock. Apparently there's a, a student coming. Sorry, B Club was taking food to Kimball. Sorry, Kimball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I now also have food, so I'm feeling pretty, pretty excited for the evening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am right upstairs and I can smell the delicious aromas, um, but I was not making food myself. Um, Common Ground, uh, for those of you who are somewhat new to Common Ground, is um, really a center for environmental learning and leadership that was founded by a group of really visionary people, but who just really weren't quite sure how to make things happen. So they found this 20 acre park and they started cleaning it up. They took away 16 dump truck fulls worth of garbage out of this abandoned city park, and they got a one-year lease. It is now 23 years later, and we have a 20-year lease, and we have multiple buildings here where we have a environmentally and social, environmental and social justice-themed high school, an environmental education center, and an urban farm where really our goal is to bring together uh, in community, uh, to get to know each other, to, to learn over food. And of course, this event, Feast, is a celebration of all that. I'd like to shout out one person who happens to be on this call tonight, our beloved farmer, Deborah Gregg. And really, if you are near the camera, just raise your hands and clap for Deborah Gregg. She is amazing. Or, or snap your fingers if that's what you prefer, that's fine. Yay! Yeah, Deb! That's Deborah. And um, so thank you, Deborah. And um, I also want to call out a couple of other people without whom this event wouldn't have happened. Obviously, you know Audrey Nafores. You've gotten emails from her. Um, she has really put in a massive amount of work coordinating with a variety of different wonderful chefs and people to bring you this amazing event. So. Round of applause for Audrey Nafores as well. Uh, or snapping fingers also. I noticed some people are good at snapping fingers. Um, Elena Agasevich has really put in an incredible amount of work uh, supporting Audrey, uh, especially in the past couple of weeks. Uh, but certainly, um, this is a labor of many months. So I uh, want to also shout out Elena Agasevich as well uh, for all of her work. And I'm going to snap my fingers. Although I'm not very good at snapping, you probably can't hear anything. So I've got a, a Speak Club member who's going to snap for me and make the sound. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully you were able to hear that. Um, I do wanna turn it over to Monica uh, at some point, but I also want to share a quick link in the chat for you. Sorry about that. Uh, one of the things that is definitely true is that Common Ground wouldn't be what it is without its community of supporters. And we get support from hundreds of people every year. Feast from the Fields is a key way we keep all of our programs going, whether it's Speak Club, you'll probably hear a little bit more about that in a short amount of time, um, or our farm or environmental education center or any of the, of the uh, high schools programs. And so I wanted to give you the opportunity, I've put a link uh, up here in the chat. If you feel motivated to support this fantastic place after having some delicious food, please feel free. Any amount is welcome. We, uh, when you click on the link, you'll see donation, you'll see suggested donation amounts starting at a thousand, going down to 500, 
then 250, and finally 100. I think there might even be 50 in there, but really you get to pick. We have hundreds of people picking what amount is right for them to support Common Ground, and that's really how we grow strong. So I really appreciate your considering that as well. I'd like to pass this over to Monica. I think she is in a place where she might be able to unmute herself and say a few words about Common Ground as well. But thanks for giving me a little time uh, to introduce you a little bit more to Common Ground. Monica, are you available to speak? Yeah, oh, there we go. Yes, I was trying to unmute. Hi, everyone. My, uh... Chefs inside are washing pots and pans and dishes, and editing next recipes. So it was a little loud in the farmhouse kitchen. Now I just came out and sitting under one of our pavilion um, by the farmhouse. Um, Common ground is beautiful year round, and I, I think um, I'm just so appreciative of the way that this community has come together to to support this virtual feast. Um, and I thought you might want to hear a little bit about how Common Ground has been faring in the last few months of challenges. Like I said, Common Ground is beautiful year round and even in March when um, our state shut down and our country shut down, Common Ground kept going. Um, our farm team and some of the folks in the office um, were here every day. I was, I've been here every day since March 12th, even after we shut down. And, you know, as a farm and as a, um, as a team that supports young people learning in school, we, we are, we considered ourselves essential and um, continue to work and provide um, nature programming virtually, school programming virtually, and kept growing food and um, sharing food with our um, with our community. So Common Ground has really, I think, risen to the challenge and 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 um, demonstrated some just exceptional community spirit in this last in these last few months. And I'm just so proud to be leading this organization and to say that we're stronger today than we than we were before, even in this even in this moment. And it's because of the support of um, the staff that Kimball talked about, the students that you got to see um, a few minutes ago and who will be making our next recipe with us, um, and many of you. So thank you all so much. We're always welcome and open to considering, um, you know, visits to Common Ground with me or Kimball. If you want to see more or learn more, we really welcome um, you to spend time with us. Okay, so I think it's about time to switch over to Seth and Kevin of Kawi. So if you're not hungry already, don't worry, because we're going to be cooking the whole meal. So you'll have some time to get hungry again for the entree. So I'm just going to switch over my view here for a moment. All right. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hey, see us. Hello. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, how, how, how's my volume? <laughs> Pretty good. Okay. Your Hi. volume is good. Oh, awesome. good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I'm Kevin McGuire. Hi, I'm Seth Wallace. And uh, together we do uh, Kawi. It's a Filipino barbecue concept. Um, so we've been, we're about two years old. Uh, we've been doing pop-ups and events all around the New Haven area, all around Connecticut, hopefully uh, a wider radius in the future. So invite us places and we'll come. Um, and you can follow us. Oh yeah, this is our sign. You can follow us online. Um, Instagram, Kawit NHV, um, and kawitfood.com. Um, our mission is to bring Filipino food to people across Connecticut and beyond. Yeah. Um, so first things first, uh, we are making pancit today. Um, and just, uh, to make things, uh, you know, move smoothly. Uh, first thing before we go through the whole equipment checklist is we'll get our noodles soaked. Right. We're, so, sorry. We're going to tell you a lot more about Ponset, but the noodle soaking is super important and we should do it right now. All right. So, um, all you need is your noodles unwrapped and placed into a dish. There we go. Let uh, us know in the chat if you've got your noodles wrapped unwrapped and ready to go in the dish um but then the next step is as hot as your tap water will go just cover it with water and let it soak is there a temperature of water we should be striving for um just um just as hot as your tap water will go 
Um, it mostly just as long as it's warm, it'll work, but hot is better. We have a question about if the noodles can be broken in half. Uh, they can be broken in half, but I also just read uh, something today about the noodles. <laughs> um, the noodles represent long life um, when you're eating it on your birthday. So if you break the noodle, it breaks the symbolism. So, so if it's, but you can break it. If it's your birthday, <laughs> you can't break it. If it's not your birthday, you can break it. Okay, All right, so we'll let that soak. So we're gonna put this aside. And so does it have to be fully submerged? Yeah, so this one doesn't quite fit. As you can see, it's starting to bend a little bit. I'm just gonna make sure the end gets in in a minute or two. Just keep an eye on it while it's soaking um, and it'll soak up the water nice and good. Okay. All right, should we go through our equipment checklist? All right, let's do it. Okay, Kevin, what do we need? All right, we need our bowl for soaking. The noodles are already in it. We need a colander for straining. Um, next, a cutting board, a knife, uh, a wooden spoon, or spatula, um, if it's a rubber spatula, just make sure it's good for high temperature. Um, we don't want it to melt. Um, we also recommend a 10 to 12 inch uh, frying pan, but a griddle works and also a wok. Right. And uh, lastly, um, a serving dish. So while folks are collecting that, can we just go through one more time from the top? Sure. Yeah, so you should already have your pancit noodles that came wrapped, unwrap them, and you're gonna wanna pour hot, or as hot as your tap water goes, hot tap water to submerge the noodles. We're gonna let them sit the whole time that we're cooking, and it's gonna be the last thing that we, um, that we really do, one of the last steps of the recipe. Um, so that's just gonna chill. And the other things that you need, we need our colander, we need our serving bowl, or plate, or whatever. Um, we need our cutting board with a wooden spoon for interviewing. Hello. Hello. And a knife. You don't have to have a fancy chef knife like Kevin does. Your regular kitchen knife will be fine. Um, and those are our, oh yeah, and this. Um, so this is our plancha or our um, griddle but you can use a frying pan or a wok. And we have these little portable burners underneath, um, but that just goes, that'll go right on your uh, stove top. Did I forget anything? Nope. Great. Okay. So let us know in the chat section how you're doing with gathering your supplies. Yeah, we wanna all be on the same page. Right. Yeah. We'll also talk through all the ingredients that we're about to be cooking with. Um, so we'll have some time as well. Intermission. <laughs> One of our favorite things about the project has been sharing Filipino food with people. Um, and the sense that we get is that not a lot of folks have had Filipino food before. So we're gonna talk a little bit today about what Filipino food is like, in case you're curious, um, some of the familiar flavors that you might've already had. Um, and we'll also talk about how to keep eating our Filipino food and uh, coming to events and things like that in the future. So. We'll learn a lot today. It's gonna to be fun. Yeah, um, so Filipino food. Um, oh, we had one question and it's how big of a pan? Oh, good question. How big of a pan? Uh, I recommend a 10 to 12 inch pan um, if you have it or uh, something with a large flat area for uh, just so liquid can evaporate as the cooking process happens. Um, yeah, so about this big. Oh, it looks like we have another Filipino on the chat. Oh, yay. Hi. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, okay. So I think we can talk through, um, while folks are continuing to get the rest of their equipment out, we can start talking through some of the ingredients that you have in your box so that we'll be using for the pan set. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Sounds great. Okay. So we already have our noodles. And actually, if you see the noodles that we have, they already soaked all the way into the water. So don't worry if they haven't um, you know, if they're still kind of sliding in, mine already soaked in, so yours are going to be fine. Um, typically, we want those to sit for about 20 minutes. Um, a little longer if you have the time, up to 30 minutes is fine. 
and then at the end when we're done cutting stuff we're going to straighten it out so that's the first sort of ingredient yep um then we have an onion um peppers uh these are bell peppers so these are not spicy um we have our sweet potato greens and if you don't have the green these sweet potato greens uh kale will also work and then as far as garnish we have basil and we have hot chilies you probably i think you have one hot chili in your bag and um we just have two because we like it spicy <laughs> And there's a mix of chilies, so some people might have the red ones, some people might have some orange habaneros, some might have some green jalapenos, so. Yeah, all right, um, just be careful if you got one of the really hot ones. <laughs> You're gonna be fine, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so we also have our, oh, well, our garlic. Oh. Just, just, a quick, uh, just a quick question, so you're either going to have the sweet potato greens or kale, not both. It's one or the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the garlic scapes, we'll be utilizing these today. Um, you can also, for this recipe, you can use like a clove of garlic as well. We would say two cloves of garlic for the recipe. Mm -hmm. And uh, our 50-50 sauce. What's the 50-50 sauce, Kevin? Uh, so our 50-50 sauce is um, it's a blend of soy sauce and vinegar. And um, typically the way we utilize this uh, for our events is we will flavor it with onions and chilies um, just to give it a little extra pizzazz. Um, but this version is perfect for this application. And our cooking oil. So the cooking oil is not in your box, but um, just like the previous recipe, any flavorless cooking oil will do. Yep. Right. Okay. So just to make sure we have all of our ingredients, we have our cooking oil. We have our 50-50 sauce that came in your container. The garlic scapes. Lovely. Our onion. The bell peppers. Our hot chilies, basil, sweet potato greens, or kale. Right. And the noodles are still soaking. Okay. Cool. So now we're ready to prep. All right. Let's start with our base flavor that'll flavor our oil, which is the garlic. Um, so for this, we're just going to try to like cut the ends off. And yeah, just be careful of the fingers. And it should look something like that. And now we'll give them a good chop. And it doesn't have to be perfectly fine if there's some chunks that are a little larger. It's just a nice little garlicky pop of flavor. All right. Next, we will julienne our onion. Cut both ends off. Then we'll cut it down the center, and then we peel. I'll help. Thanks. You're welcome. Don't cry, friends. All right. So for the julienne, we just work from. Uh, the, well, I'm working from the right to the left, but that'll be different if you're left-handed. Um, so just make nice, even strips. And then once you get past halfway, you can turn it back over. Start again.
and then we'll repeat that with the other half. So I just want to point out that Kevin has fantastic knife skills, and if you're like me <laughs> and don't have fantastic knife skills, one of the things that I learned from him, you want to show them with your fingers, is the, the grip that you're supposed to be holding it with. So I'm resting the knife against, against the flat part of my, uh, my knuckle, and that prevents my fingertips from getting caught under the knife. Farmer Deb says, the claw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is the claw. I haven't heard the call in a long time. We also had someone in the comments section say that they have the garlic um, chive flower in their backyard. They never knew what it was oh, that's until so now. Cool. All right. Is everybody ready for the pepper or the, the bell peppers? We got Darlene. Thumbs up. I know Darlene has chefs in her family, so right. she's got lots of skills. <laughs> Darlene's on it. She knows. Anybody else want to let us know how you're doing in the chat before we move on? Question. Uh, do we put this, this, like the stem, into the oil for it to have flavor? Did I hear that right? So are you asking if the, if is, the, I think the question is, do you use the stem or the flower to put into the oil for the flavor? Oh, uh, the, the flower side, right. So the flower side. Flower right. side. <laughs> I have the stems and they're going in the compost pile. But. And then we have a few more folks saying they need a little bit more time that they're working That's on it. Fine. No problem. We're doing this together. Yeah. So um, an interesting fact about Ponset is that um, there have, like from what we have found, there's at least over 35 different varieties of Ponset. Um, so um, it's kind of free game on what you can add, what you can subtract, and what you could do to your liking. Right. Um, so this one is Ponset Common Ground, <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. Right. Um, do you want to talk, is now a good time to talk about uh, what Filipino food is? Uh, sure. We okay. can, yeah, we can bring that up uh, while people are getting caught up. Yeah. And when you're, start throwing us some thumbs up when you're ready for us to move on. Yeah. Um, we so, have a question uh, and a comment. Sorry. <laughs> we were putting how much oil we should be flavoring. Oil that we're putting in the pan, we're putting the garlic thing in. How much oil should we use? Uh, um, we're not there yet, but we're, you're only going to need a couple of tablespoons, maybe about okay. three. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then we'd like to show off our Julianning um, skills. Uh, oh, yes, please. Hold on. Let me see so I can see the monitor. Oh, I can't see it. Oh, it doesn't work. Look at that. Wow. Is it showing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It looks really good. I, I try to chop all the onions at home. He's a chef, so he's cooking all the time. And I, so it means I'm the chopper at home so I can get my skills sort of in the general area of acceptable. And so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Filipino food in the, the best way I've found to describe it is it takes all my favorite parts of Chinese food, Spanish food, American food, and local Filipino like ingredients and produce and kind of mashes them all together um, into just like this wonderful hodgepodge of like influence. Um, it's very hard to describe in just a few sentences. Um, and the best way to find out is to just eat more of it. Um, but a lot of like the prominent flavors um, are soy sauce, garlic, calamansi, which is a Filipino lime, but lemons are a good substitute sometimes. Um, vinegar, also very important. And um, what I forgot to think about earlier was uh, fish sauce, excellent ingredient. Um, so those flavors are very prominent throughout a lot of its cooking. So. And t uh, typically Filipino meals are split up into different components. So ulam is the main dish. Um, a pancit is a dish 
with noodles of any variety, right? Um, gulai is a vegetable dish. Um, and so there's sort of different components of the meal that get mixed and matched. Um, yeah, very good for sharing actually, which is nice. All right, we're getting some thumbs up that okay. folks are ready to move on. Let's keep chopping then. Cool. Would you like to julienne the bell pepper? Oh man, I really, I got myself in it. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing this one. We're going to be fine. All right. See, I also have the claw. And I'm just taking the tops up, throwing them. So we got a question. Do we need to break up the flower part of the garlic or keep it intact? So what Kevin did, here, I'll show you. What Kevin did was he gave it like a rough chop. So it's, as you can see, we have mostly in like a minced, basically. So if you were using regular garlic, we would tell you to mince it. So basically you just want to kind of have a couple chops. Some of them are intact. Others of them are kind of chopped. So it doesn't have to be super fine. Just enough to like, it's going to flavor the oil. Okay, so I pulled out my top. I pulled out most of my seeds. There we go. I'm sure that's a better way to do that. And we're going to split it. Go ahead and yeah, just like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we want kind of like bite-sized strips. Okay. See, my, how's my claw skills, everybody? Am I doing okay? Okay, see, these are my juliennes. Oops, that was a little thin. Beverly Skiles says no blood. No, I know. I was talking about that on the way here. I was like, that would be so embarrassing. <laughs> Don't distract me, Beverly. Okay. How'd I do, Kevin? You did great. I did great, everyone. All right, top comes off. This one doesn't really have that much in the middle. These are beautiful peppers. And the peppers in all of your kits were provided by Common Ground or for, from another local farm for some of them, but Deborah, I don't know if you're still here. I can't remember exactly who. From Chicarelli Farm. Thanks, Deb. Yeah, fourth <laughs> generation. Oh, wow, that's so cool. So all these go together. Almost done. We have a question. Where does one purchase Bihan noodles? So the, did I pronounce that correctly? Uh, Bihon. Bihon. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so the Bihon noodles, we were able to find it at Hong Kong Market on Whitney Avenue. Um, in New Haven. In New Haven. It's the corner of Trumbull and Whitney Avenue. Um, and we've also found one other store. Uh, I believe the town is East Haven. T uh, Asian Market. Yes, T Asian, Asian Market on Fox and Boulevard. Um, both of those are probably our two favorite Asian markets to shop at. Shout out. Hopefully they give us a discount now because Lord yeah. knows we drop enough money now. <laughs> yeah. And do you, another question, do you prefer these or Canton? Um, I prefer these noodles only because um, it's what I grew up eating, and so my memories are attached to this noodle. Um, that, that's pretty much what it boils down to for me. Um, because yes, there are, there are plenty of other noodles in the noodle sea. Yeah, so different types of uh, pancit use different types of noodles that are made out of different things. Some bihon is made with rice noodles. The ones we're using and the ones in your box today are, the brand is called Super Q. It's like a red package. It has a big Q on it. You'll see it. Golden Bihon noodles. These are actually made out of cornstarch. So when you show them to your friends, they're going to be like rice noodles, but they're not. They're cornstarch noodles. Um, Don't ask me how they're made. From their cornstarch. That's all I know. Yeah. Um, the, um, there's lots of other different types of pancit. Um, one of them uh, when we were in the Philippines, we got to eat uh, last summer, or no, the summer before. Last summer didn't really count. Um, we got to eat uh, pancit hab hab, 
which are noodles that are served flat in a banana leaf. And you just stick your face straight in it. Actually, you can see a picture of us trying to eat it on our Instagram. It is so oh, delicious. Right behind you. Uh, that's yeah, well, no, not that's also, noodles. Yeah, it's something else. It's just Molly and the banana leaf. But um, so apparently we learned that um, hob hob is an onomatopoeia for like the sound that a pig makes when it's eating. So as you like shove this dish into your face. The sound like, I made while I was eating it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also for panza pihon, which is our dish today, um, the province that Kevin's family is from in the Philippines, Cavite. Um, there's a version of this where they use squid ink to dye the dish black. Um, and that's called uh, panza choca. So lots of different varieties out there. Um, definitely try them all. All right, okay, so we have our pieces of garlic that are chopped roughly. Yep. We have our onions julienne. We have our peppers julienne. What should we do next? All right. Um, for our sweet potato greens, um, let's just uh, make sure that we only have about an inch or so of, uh, of stem. Just don't want it to be like too much stem, not enough leaf. So that that's the only reason. We just heard the word that you are both charming and informative. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Education is very important. <laughs> okay, so Kevin, show them what you did again. Yep, I just uh, you know moved my rubber band down to about an inch below the leaf, and I just gave it one cut. And we will just leave these whole and let them wilt while we cook. And these are from these Common are Ground. Common yeah. Ground. So Seth and Kevin actually came here and did a little inspirational walk around the farm with really farmer Diane and myself mm -hmm. and tasted out a bunch of different items. And had you actually used sweet potato greens before? Hadn't used it before this. Nope. So this is like our new favorite thing to add. And we are definitely going to hang out here as much as possible. <laughs> and then there's a question because remember some folks have kale right. mm -hmm. and not sweet potato greens. Yep. So my Over recommendation here. for the kale, um, just because I, I don't want there to be, uh, don't want it to be like too crispy. I want this uh, all to like cook well together. Um, all we got to do is just like take the middle rib out. Ooh. Let's Drop practice it. that together. Yeah. And yeah, we could just do strips like this. Okay. Do I pull this one? So we've got another question. Let me just open it. What if we have both sweet potato greens and kale? Are you making multiple portions, Aaron? Um, this this batch will make just about uh, yeah, like about four portions or so. Um, you can mix and match. Yeah. So this is for someone who's making. They got two boxes. They got two boxes. And they're making double portions. They okay. have one sweet potato and one kale. Yeah, you can mix them together, no problem. Yeah, you can mix them could do one way and one the other. That's oh, totally fine. That's like the chef in you. So you can taste test them. You could have a contest, yeah. see which one is better. <laughs> yeah. So, OK. So do we want to pull any more kale? Yeah, do a few more leaves. OK. Please. Please. All right. There we go. Okay. Now, let's uh, check in on our soaking noodles. Um, give the bowl a touch before you stick your hands right in. Oh, so Aaron, you can mix. Absolutely. And yes, Monica, please show off what's going on over there. OK, OK. This is, this is going to be a life hack. You know, I saw the chef do that with the, with the kale. Miss Monica had that life hack. You put this into this, pull it. Oh, and what's in there? Yeah. Oh. Nice. Yes. <laughs> nice. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. That's cool. Thank you. We're going to try that. <laughs> So we have a question. Uh, maybe Deb could answer this because I'm not quite sure. Do I need to be concerned about lots of brown spots on my sweet potato greens? Probably not. Nope, I'm not concerned. No. We're not concerned. You don't have to be concerned. Yeah, it probably just happened because they've 
been waiting for you to cook them and they got sad. Yeah, it's okay. We have a little bit on ours too, but um, the flavor of these is really fantastic and um, it's not going to make a difference at all. Yeah, we love them. Okay, you want me to put the noodles back? Well, I just wanted to show them. So here's what the noodles do. Um, they've become pretty soft and pliable. So what we can now do is strain them out. All right, moving on to noodle straining. Okay. Gotta set that right there. All right, so just one, two, three, go. <laughs> Kevin always says you gotta commit to it. <laughs> and if you have any questions about if your noodles are ready or not, just let us know. If you can do this, you are ready. <laughs> it's got a fun texture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, notice that we didn't boil the noodles. We always, um, I'm Italian, so I think, you know, at least that was when I, when I was learning how to make pancit, I was like, cool, we boil these, and you do not do that, so just the hot water. Um, other, yeah. but other noodle varieties for pancit, other types of pancit you might, um, but this particular one, just the water will do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a comment coming in that some noodles are not ready. So just okay. keep sitting. No worries. So yeah, just keep, keep them sitting. We're going to do a lot more stuff and you can keep them. Um, in fact, uh, we weren't even planning. He just noticed they were ready now. So we weren't even planning to pull them out for a little while. So you can keep them um, chilling for as long as we were cooking. So I think we had a question about, can you show us chopping the sweet potato greens, but we haven't gotten there, right? Oh, um, the sweet potato greens, we're, in this recipe, we're going to leave them whole. But if you feel necessary to chop, um, one way you can go about it is just going down the center. And then should we cut the stems? Uh, you can leave about an inch of stem on it and they will be a little bit crispy, but they're not gonna be stringy. It's, it's a, it, it sauté well, right. Um, we found that when we were playing with the playing with them, any longer of a stem got a little tough. So this is just about the length, one inch that you you want to be eating. Okay. Now, now we should clean up. <laughs> All right, we're just cleaning up our space a little bit. Do we saute back in the kale stems? Nope. So all of the stems from the garlic and the kale are just going straight into the compost. Compost it is. I've got my little compost pile here. Okay. We ready? Oh, well, I wanted to know if anybody else had any questions or should we just keep talking about our, you know, being informative? Oh yeah, should we, is now a good time to pause? Are we we're okay? Okay, great. So um, we'll go slow. And if you feel like you're not um, ready yet, no worries, just drop a comment and we're all, you know, we have lots of fun stories. Like we could do this all day, so. <laughs> Okay, you ready? For the next step? Yeah, should we trade sides? Yeah, let's okay. trade sides. <laughs> all right, um, so now that we have all of our ingredients prepped, let's take the lids off of our sauce or for us, our oil as well. Right, so now is the time you're gonna wanna grab a couple of tablespoons of um, vegetable oil, canola oil, olive oil, um, any kind of flavorless oil. I would avoid like the extra virgin olive oil if you have a choice, but oil, you know, any kind of oil will do. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll preheat our our uh, skillet. Or Question our about oven. should the hot peppers be chopped already? Nope. So see, we already have, we still have our hot peppers intact and our basil intact. The reason why is because we're going to cut it at the end and we want it to stay like nice and fresh. And the by uh, leaving the chilies till the end, uh, it'll allow you to add as much or as little as you'd like um, without spicing up the whole dish if that's how you uh, would like to eat it, so. We have a question that says, our oil in a plastic thing smells like peanut oil. Is that possible? So you don't have oil in a plastic container. Yeah. The only reason why we have this is because we're just cooking in the middle of common ground. But this is what you got. This is our 50-50 sauce. It's a blend of soy 
and vinegar. Um, if you have a gluten-free box, you have tamari, which is gluten-free. Um, and like we said, when you come to one of our events, we typically, um, we make our own sort of house-made sauces for our dishes. Um, we flavor this with, um, with all sorts of spices and chilies. So when you come visit us, it's like this with pizzazz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so that's what that is um, with the, uh, and you can tell that it's from us because it has our sticker on it. Oh, I know. All right, Kevin got rid of it so you can't see it. <laughs> okay. All right. So your skillet is heating up, right? Yep. What what uh, level of heat should we have it at, Kevin? Um, we should have it at about medium high. Uh, we just kind of want it to be able to get our oil smoking. So once you notice your pan is really hot, then you add your oil. So. Mine's really hot, so I'm going to do that now. All right. And here it's sizzling. Right. So once your oil uh, starts to shimmer, that's when uh, you can start adding your ingredients. Garlic is first. Well, all those little flowers that you chopped up. Start to smell very aromatic at this time. Mmm, it does. Yeah, and we will let that cook for a second. And then the next step is adding the rest of the vegetables we just cut. We got a question. If we don't have fresh basil, can we add dry basil here? You sure can. You sure yeah. can. So, but now is not the time for basil, though. Yes, no so basil we'll yet. Basil. So all we have is just the garlic, um, either a clove of garlic or the little garlic um, pods that were in your box, and we're adding our onion. So our onions go in. Our julienne peppers go in. Wow, those peppers are beautifully chopped. <laughs> Thank you, Seth. And they were also beautifully grown. Right, they're beautifully grown. <laughs> okay. Sorry, you should not use your fingertips to cook with. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were on the chat last night, we talked about this, how chefs have a little bit of a different experience with their fingertips oh than the rest of us because they actually lose, they have some nerve damage from all of the heat. And so they can't feel the heat the same way that we can. Wait a second, hold on, look at what we're doing. Yeah. All right, so we are just allowing all our sweet potato greens to steam on top of the rest of our vegetables. And we are, um, we are uh, trying to resist the urge to keep stirring. Uh, we want to add color and just allow um, those flavors to develop um, through that, um, the reaction of the burning, the Maillard reaction. So no stirring. So no stirring. So you're just kind of gently pressing and moving things around. Well, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that my greens are kind of catching some steam. But we will let this sit for a little while. And um, yeah, so. Wow. Okay. So our vegetables are cooking. And we'll um, we'll cook those for a few minutes, right? Yep. Okay, so now is a good time to catch up if you're not uh, where we are. Um, question about the kale, kale question mark. Yeah, so if, you're, if you were using your kale, we would be doing the same thing that we would do with the sweet potato. So you can even like, I would just, I'm gonna make some room for the kale. I would put it on top. Same thing, we're just gonna steam it. So I as well have both. Aha, there we go. How's everybody doing? I know it smells amazing where I'm standing right, right now. Okay. Um, so question says, should we rotate more? Kale is a bigger amount. Um, not quite yet. We would just kind of let it sit still. Nope. Yeah, those are good. I know we always want to stir stuff because it makes us feel like we're like cooking, like we're really doing something. But 
you are doing things, don't worry. <laughs> happening whether you like it or not <laughs> <laughs> and if you were on the chat last night or the um, lesson last night you know this but I just want to share so we're coming to you live from the multi-purpose room at common ground which is a lot like our gymnasium um, and it's actually we are in an open air space right now so if you were looking behind me you would see that we've got a huge door completely open to our campus and our farm right now so we're hearing crickets and we're hearing all sorts of beautiful stuff along with our sizzling onions and peppers. Which is the best way to cook for sure. All right, so uh, I'm smelling what's happening in, in the pan and you can kind of smell that uh, roasted flavor starting to develop. And so now we can try to give it a stir and just assess our progress. So stirring, you can see little bits of color on our onion, it's gonna be beautiful. So we'll give it a few more stirs. And then we'll go back to letting it sit. Hands off. No touch. <laughs> <laughs> We have. Uh, no hot peppers yet that is correct no hot peppers yet so things that we didn't add so far are the sauce that we sent you these are just my leftover onions don't look at those um the sauce that we sent you we didn't add our peppers our hot peppers and we didn't add our basil so those are the things that you should still have we also did not add our noodles so you can see that all the, uh, the greens have started to like wilt and come down in size. This is such a beautiful method. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, it smells so good. Mm. Yeah, cooking should always be a very uh, sensory experience. And I think it makes a world of difference too when you have an intimate connection to where the recipe ingredients are coming from as well. Definitely. Right. Let's give it another stir. My sweet potato greens are now starting to take on some color. They're looking really nice and roasted. All right. And I think we are good to start adding noodles sauce. Okay. So we'll go over this whole thing again in case you're behind us. And we got to add our noodles now because you can see that we're getting some nice like charry pieces and we don't want it to go too far. Okay. So noodles will go right in. Be sure to let us know how you're doing on the chat. If you need any questions answered, we're here for you. And I always recommend adding half of your, your uh, sauce only because it has a high salt content. Um, you don't want it to get too salty because you can't take that salt out. So we'll start with that. Right. No hot peppers yet. <laughs> no hot peppers yet. I know we all want them. I'm going to hold them. I'm going to hold them. <laughs> Seth is taking the hot peppers away from all of you right. until we're ready. Uh, we have a question about what is in the 50-50 sauce. Right. So the 50-50 sauce is, and notice we, we already poured half in, we have half left. So don't pour the whole thing all at once. The 50-50 sauce is one of our house-made sauces that we have at Kawi. It is a blend of soy and vinegar. If you have a gluten-free box, you have tamari and vinegar. Um, and when you come to see us for an event, you'll, you'll know that this is the sauce because it, it's infused with chilies and other spices when we, when we do our pop-ups. Um, so because we have some chilies that are going in the dish today, which we still didn't add, um, we left them out of the sauce because we didn't want to make it too spicy. All right, so check it out. You'll notice that there's liquid leaching out of the noodles. 
and that's you know some of the water content from the soy sauce and um, once it starts to uh, completely dissipate um, if you spoon out a little bit give it a taste again be careful if you feel like it could use more salt or more vinegar flavor go ahead and add some more yes more let's do it okay so we decided we need more salt and more vinegar I am also looking at the noodles. We've cooked this a million times. I'm seeing some like white patches and stuff. So, you know, it's another good indicator that you could use a little bit more sauce. So we're just going to go ahead and pour the rest of the sauce. Oh, I'll go about half of that. Okay, so now I'm only going to do another half of this. And I still have some left. And now we are starting to have a pretty even, uh, almost brown or gold color. And right there, I'm going to stop cooking. Oh, the smell is amazing. So, so I'm just going to move it around a little bit so it doesn't just stick to one spot, but I have turned my heat off. I haven't heard from the Speak Club in a really long time, so I hope you're still cooking over there because I expect another little dish to be delivered. I don't know if any of you saw this. <laughs> but I'm glad you asked. Okay, so right now, what the Nara Chacon is doing, you see that? Oh, yes. You see that boom right there? That's the noodle, that's the sauce, kale. She is gorgeous. So. Yes. I wonder if it looks like they, if there could be a little bit more sauce. I think it looks like you can have more sauce in that one. Either. As soon as you add your noodles, you're ready to go with half the sauce. Add more sauce. Add more sauce. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you're good. You're good. That's fine. How's everybody else doing out there? Oh, I have a question here. Sure. Uh, let's see. To add protein, would you add chicken or shrimp? Uh, both. <laughs> That's the answer. Um, either one works. Um, Filipinos eat it all. So <laughs> you can, uh, there's some varieties that have uh, pork belly. We've done it with smoked pork, smoked right. chicken. Um, the protein uh, of your choice is whatever you want it to be. So, yeah. so um, we're a Filipino barbecue project, so our meats are smoked for sometimes upwards of 12 hours. So we love to top this with like a smork. Uh, sm I said smorked. <laughs> <laughs> a smorked. <laughs> a smoked pork shoulder um, or a smoked chicken thigh. Um, so if you've eaten at any of our events before, you might have had this dish with some smoked chicken or pork. Um, but we also do, we, we were really passionate about having a lot of like vegan and gluten-free options in all of our events. So um, we typically separate the noodles from the meats and then it's like a combine your own type of situation. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And Tara, if you haven't already, yes, turn off the heat if your noodles are done. Yep. So basically as soon as your um, sauce is mixed into the noodles, you don't want to overcook anything. You want your vegetables to still have a little bit of a bite. So we're going to turn the heat off. Art says soy nuggets, and I say, Art, you live your best life, yes. and you put them right in. Soy nuggets. Do it. Do it. Um, Seitan. Also, something that worried me. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, sure. Um, something that worried me when we, when we first started cooking pancit, when I was learning how to cook pancit, was this thing over here. So there are sometimes like a little bit of noodle stick to the bottom. See that? That's OK. It didn't mean that you burned anything. It's all right that some of the noodles kind of have this little thing on the bottom. So don't feel like you did anything wrong. So secrets of pun safe making. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to put it in the serving dish. You have tons I have a feeling tofu would be great. Would tofu be good? Yeah. Tofu would be great. Absolutely. It's right there. Yeah. Is this recipe on the bottom? I'm not sure what the question is. Maybe you can reword it for me. Oh, like is it published somewhere? Maybe. Okay. 
there should have been a recipe sheet included in your box. If you need us to, we can always email it to you um, or even put it in the chat bar potentially. So just let us know. Okay, so we're gonna plate because um, we don't want it sitting on the plancha for too long. Okay. So we're just gonna kind of grab all of our noodles, put them in this bowl, get all of our stuff. And uh, if you guys don't know, I do love little burnt bits mm. of food. Um, I think uh, the little bits of bitterness help break up, you know, savory flavors. Uh, and help just elevate the dish to like, you know, a different level. It adds a complexity. Make it look nice. Yep. So you can impress your friends and family. <laughs> so those huge uh, leaves of sweet potatoes have now been reduced to a very small size now, which is uh, one of the reasons why chopping was unnecessary. And um, we are, ready to garnish. Right, okay, so we're gonna put the dish aside in Kevin's hands. <laughs> Wait, you should chop these ones. Okay, because you're a better chopper. I'm a better holder. Yes, the sheets are double-sided. So let us know if you're having trouble finding the recipe and we will get it to you. Tarlene, yes. Entire Speed Club, yes. Look at that dish. All right, so just a very careful thin slice of the peppers. Sorry, chilies. <laughs> so for everyone who was so ready to put in <laughs> your chilies or your hot peppers, this is the time. But keep in mind, we did provide different peppers for each box. And so I think they're going to have different spice quality as well. So you might want to taste test a little bit and make sure that you are happy with the spice level. Right. All right. So, so we have one question. Please remind us, what are the ingredients of the 50-50? Go ahead. Uh, soy sauce and vinegar. If you have the gluten-free box, it's a gluten-free tamari and white vinegar. And what a white vinegar. And yeah, yeah if you have a gluten-free box, it's, it should say G-free right on... Um, on your label. All right, so the most difficult part, the whole thing is the garnish. That's a lie. We're just sprinkling. And white basil, vinegar, yes. For the basil, just little hand torn pieces. Now, traditionally, Basil would not be found on a ponset, but here we are cooking at Common Ground, and these are the ingredients provided to us. And there we go. Ta-da! Ta Should we hold it and look all cute? Hold yes. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna hold it and look all cute. <laughs> it's a noodle. What? <laughs> Yay. Okay, it's a portion review. So um, another thing that you can do, um, if you happen to have any lemons, it's really nice to have lemons to um, squeeze a little lemon juice or something on it. Um, you don't need it, but uh, it's something that, you know, you have the vinegar and the 50-50 sauce is going to help brighten things up. Um, so the lemons are not necessary, but if you have them and like a little extra brightness, then you can lemon, right? Yes. I see some folks eating. I see okay. Art Hunt eating. So exciting. Where can we find the Kawi pop-up? That's a great question. Um, as far as pop-ups, nothing in the books yet. Right. So we have an immense amount of respect for our friends in the restaurant industry and what they're going through right now. Uh, since we don't have a physical location yet, we've just been doing events and things like that in the history of how we were brainstorming ways to have socially distanced events, um, more internet-based events. Let us know if you would sign up for a Seth and Kevin cooking club um, where we would do Filipino recipes. I'm trying to get Kevin to do it, so <laughs> I'm working um, on it. And um, 
Filipino desserts. Right. There's also fantastic desserts that we love sharing with folks. So um, yeah, we're, we're finding other ways to get out there again. Um, and I think now is a good time to think about doing that. So um, please do follow us on social media. And um, you know, if you know of a space that seems like it might work for the current times, then we'd love to, we'd love to envision that with you. So getting lots of great comments. Lots of great and we're hearing that. Members, cool. okay. well, their SP Club members wanted to show off their first bite. Oh, yes. yes. Okay, so make sure you're speaking. Okay, to be okay, like, hey, hold on, SP Club. Good night. Okay. Oh. Ready? Set. Oh, yeah. Wow. I don't have a fork, so I'm struggling with the spoon. So fantastic. They were very excited about the stuff today. Hey, I see this comment from Feast 2020. So we will be able to send you a recording the second that we wrap up, and you'll be able to see every step. Um, does anyone need us to recap different parts of what we've, we've done and how we end up at the final stage? Let us know if you have more questions. Mm -hmm. A question about what does Kawi mean? Oh, so right. the, uh, so the meaning of Kawi, uh, the literal translation, uh, is a hook. But um, I named but, this project uh, after the city in the Philippines that my family comes from. Um, and that city received its name because of the bay that it has, that is, uh, so. So Kaui is a, a city in the Cavite province. Which was probably our of the world. Horrible direction. It also takes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a five minute drive in the evening, but an hour long ride in the afternoon. That's true, it depends on when you're trying to get there. Getting a lot of comments about how delicious it is. Please tag us. Um, oh, so hashtag, I think I have a hashtag for it. Yes, put your pictures up of the yeah, meal that you made. Ikawi, so we can see all the dishes that you made. Ikawi. Like I'm prepared. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anything else, everybody? We'd love to, if you want to show us your dish, we'd love if you walked up to the camera and you showed it to us as well. Yeah, please. And maybe you can talk so we can see it. So I'll show mine. I've got two different versions. This is with the sweet potatoes. I'm sorry I didn't eat that one. And then this is the version with the kale, which is absolutely delicious. Nice. So I made, I made two batches at once, so it was a little bit crazy, but it was great. <laughs> wow. So cool, yes. Oh, beautiful. I see another one. Looking good. I see many happy faces eating. Some people do not want to get up from their table to show us their meal because they are already enjoying. You don't have to do that. <laughs> I see Deb's whole family is eating the meal. Hey, fam. Oh. All right, everybody. Okay. All right, everyone. We just want to thank you so much for joining us. This has been something that we all had to put our brains together to figure out. So that comes between me, the chefs, my colleagues, my coworkers, and a ton of other community members. And we thank you all for joining us and for sharing this with us. And if you want to learn more about Common Ground, you can easily go to our website. So that's commongroundct.org. If you want to ask questions, you can email me, you can email Kimball, you can email Monica and set up a time to do a socially distanced tour here. Um, and until then, we just want to thank you all for being a part of our community and for sharing this event with us. So we're going to say bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye from Club. Thank you. Thank you.
Just wrapping up some answers on the chat before I leave. Good night, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.